Hey there, thanks for stopping by today. My name's Matt Marash. I'm the host of Large Format Friday, so if this is your first time to the channel, I do a show called Large Format Friday. Each and every Friday, we're here and we're talking about something large format photography. Today, I wanted to share my thoughts and feelings about this new little device, the Raveni Labs Spot Meter. It goes live on Kickstarter today, and the reason I'm doing the video today is I think this has some really great uses even outside of large format photography. So let's chat a little bit about it. But first, some backstory. I've been using a spot meter for as long as I can remember with my film camera. My very first large format camera, my Eastman Commercial B, also came with a light meter that had an interchangeable dome on it and that dome that popped out also had an attachment for a five degree spot meter. This device didn't make much sense until I got my large format camera and I started reading things like Ansel Adams the Negative and hey, maybe I do want to get this little handheld spot meter to measure reflected light values off of different areas in the scene. After a few years clunking around with that and kind of suffering through this failing LCD on the meter, I decided to upgrade and I ended up upgrading to uh, this concealed carry looking thing right here. This is the Sekonic L778 Dual Spot F, which is a dedicated three degree and one degree spot meter that also has the ability to synchronize with flash via a hot shoe and a PC sync. It is a pretty crazy and actually pretty heavy little device. This is about a pound, pound and a half, and it takes up about a full lens size space in my bag. And if you're shooting something smaller than large format, it's kind of a ridiculous inclusion. This might even be larger than your camera. So I'm not gonna say it's a compact meter by any stretch of the imagination, but it's just what I've used. And I think I picked this one up for like 300 bucks and this was eight or nine years ago. So it was an okay deal then, but when this thing was new, it was over $700. That's not a small price point. And that's where we get to modern solutions for this. Smartphones have meters, a lot of modern digital cameras have meters, and there are now also some niche and boutique meters that are coming out on the market. One such one uh, that was successfully funded and launched at the end of last year was this adorable little thing. Uh, this is the original little light meter from Raveni Labs, and this is an awesome spot meter because it fits in the hot shoe, but it's almost the same size as the hot shoe. Uh, just for comparison, there's the light meter, and there's a roll of FPP double X. Yeah, that's like, it's, it's nothing. It's a super teeny tiny little 3D printed nylon meter, which is awesome. Well, the folks at Raveni Labs are at it again. I received an email uh, late in 2020 asking, hey, I'm coming up with a spot meter. And like, I didn't even read the rest. I was like, sold, yes, I am all here for it because I love using my spot meter. The advantage of using a spot meter is being able to take reflected light readings off of very small areas in your scene. This is very, very useful for people that are doing landscape photography, working with really expensive and really sensitive uh, films like slide film, you know, E6 transparency film, where you have limited dynamic range, but you wanna maximize those big expensive pieces of film. A spot meter is excellent for that. This little guy is great, but it's really gonna average the scene and it's not gonna have that very, uh, that very precise uh, little circle of metered exposure. So I was sent over a review copy, full disclosure, I'm not being paid to talk about this. I'm just excited that there's something new in the market. What I'm doing is evaluating this pre-production model of the Raveni Lab spot meter and just giving you my, my honest opinion. This is it right here. This is the Raveni Lab spot meter. It is way bigger than the initial one, but here it is next to a, yeah, a canister of film. It is a very, very small, uh, little device. It is. It weighs almost nothing. So it, this is 3D printed nylon. It has this little magnifier lens. This is for viewing your metered readings on here. Four little buttons and a little lanyard. I think the lanyard weighs about as much as the unit itself. What's really cool about this is it is infinitely smaller than a lot of the other larger, more expensive dedicated spot meters out there. This takes up the same amount of space as an extra lens and weighs about the same as an extra eight by 10 film holder. That's big for me. It frees up extra weight in my bag. So now I can carry like some extra film or food or something. <laughs> it's a really neat lightweight device. It's pretty intuitive. The user interface is super easy. There is a little measuring, the little opening for letting in your light. So this is the spot part of the spot meter. This is the viewing reticle, which is a little LCD screen with a magnifying lens up front. And then we have four buttons 
up top, we have a power button, a menu button, and left and right arrows, and these help you toggle through and go through the menu options. What's interesting about this light meter and was kind of something that turned me off initially was reading that, well, this does not have a viewing lens. Most dedicated spot meters, even the really expensive Sekonic uh, spot meters, like the 858 or the 778, have a viewing lens which has a bit of a telephoto design. So I'm seeing a little bit further away and at its best case, I'm closing one eye, holding the meter up to my eye and there is, there's two little circles. There's a three degree larger circle and in the, in the center there, like a little bullseye, is a one degree spot circle. When I hold the Raveni Labs meter up to my eye and I close my eye, there's nothing there. It's a dark screen. The reason this viewing device is meant to be used with binocular vision. When I turn it on, the LCD display is on and I have to keep both eyes open. What the viewing reticle is doing is it's taking advantage of our, of our binocular vision. So as long as I have one eye looking through and another eye open, uh, my brain's naturally gonna do what it always does and overlay and creates that 3D image. And now I can still aim my spot meter and on the display, I'm gonna have my time measurement, my status, my EV, my exposure values, my f-stop, an R value, which is a remainder, what's left over from that value, and an ISO measurement with the circles in the center, which represent a uh, five degree and a one degree measurement. The Raveni Lab spot meter has several different modes in here. It has a standard measurement mode, which is mode single, has averaging mode. My averaging mode allows me to take three measurements and arrive at an average. Uh, my shadow reading, which was probably should be like your shadow that you wanna have detail in, your highlight that you wanna have detail in, and your middle gray value. So if I take my measurement there, find my shadow, hit my power button to place that, take a value at the highlights, and it's gonna give me an averaged meter reading. There's one other mode in here that at first I wasn't sure about it, but it's actually my favorite mode in the entire, uh, the entire thing, and that's the third mode, which is PMM, the Precision Metering Method. Now this is, this is in partnership with Nick Carver, who if you don't know Nick Carver, I'm gonna, there's a link to his channel. He's awesome, does a lot of great stuff uh, in just film photography in general, great educator and just awesome, awesome overall work. In his classes, he teaches using the pre precision metering method. But I can assure you, if you are someone that has studied the zone system before, this is gonna feel very, very at home. The precision metering method goes as follows. I start it up and hold it up to my eye. It says, pick a tone or place a value. So uh, I'm gonna pick something that is maybe, let's say a little bit lighter than middle gray. I'll, pl I'll pick it, I'll hit my spot to take that measurement and now I can place it says place tone or I can place where that value is so I can go from middle gray all the way up to textureless white which is paper base white or I can go all the way down to textureless black which is black with no detail but the advantage to this is I'm able to place that value and it says based on a dynamic range that I set in this little meter where my exposure lies but just doing that, that sounds like the zone system. Pre precision metering method takes it a step further in that I'm supposed to check different values across each other. And this helps me evaluate whether or not I'm working within a good dynamic range. So I'll take a measurement off of something that I want to be black with a little bit of detail, then check my PMM value for something really bright white. So something that's nearly white. And if I'm coming in and I'm at the right exposure for each of those measurements, I'm good to go. Where I found this most valuable is using films that have a much more limited dynamic range. And that's what's neat about this. I can go in here during PMM and tell it, hey, I want my shadows to go down minus five EV and my highlights to go plus five EV. By the way, that's something that you would want for black and white materials that you're very familiar with. Would not be good for, uh, for E6 or slide film that has a much lower dynamic range. For using slide films, I set those EV values to minus two and plus two. That's gonna give me a five f-stop range, which is pretty standard for a lot of slide films, including Provia, Velvia, Ektachrome, things like that. You have shutter and aperture priority within those modes. So when you take meter readings, do you want to fix your shutter speed and get an aperture difference? Or do you want to set your aperture and find out what your shutter speed is going to be? So it's really, it's going to work the way you want to work. I've been working with this meter for almost a month now. 
I've taken it out on several shoots that you might have already seen here on Large Format Friday on the channel. I wanted to throw myself a challenge, but also really see if I can work out and figure out what the limits of this little meter are. This is not gonna be like a brick walls and line charts and graphs sort of, of test. It's a light meter. So the first week I had this, I took it out to Christmas Rock State Nature Preserve. Uh, you'll see, I'm gonna link to a previous LFF episode. All the pictures I did there, I metered with the Raveni Labs meter and I cross-checked it with my Sakonic because I had trust issues, it was still very new. And I shouldn't have been surprised, it's a light meter, it did great. But to add to the challenge, I used a film which was a little bit expired. I rated it at the normal speed. It was T-Max 100. I rated it at 100 and it turned out great, but I also developed the film in something that I'm not used to always developing in. I developed in Kodak HC 110. It's a developer which will punish me for having incorrect readings in my shadows and highlights, which is gonna really show me, you know, how far on or off this meter is. And, and I shouldn't have been surprised. This meter was awesome. It came from the factory dead on, and yeah, it's, it's a light meter, guys. It's not going to make you a better photographer, but if it's a tool that is more liberating and maybe not as limiting as something bigger and heavier, that's, that's when you know it's the right thing for you. Uh, I did a few sessions with the PMM mode, and I was working with snow, so okay, this snow is nearly white, or oh, this snow with the highlight, that's actually textureless white. Let's see if that gets me the shot. Highlights were exactly where I wanted them to be. So that was pretty cool. Probably the hardest thing to get used to is the dual eye use. So if you do only have monocular vision, this one might be one where you have to like hold it up and move it and bring it back. But even doing so, you can always press and hold the power button and kind of probe around with your measurement. And you can see those EV changes. So even if you're not sure that you're lined up, you know, precisely side to side with your, your other eye, you can measure that EV range and you know you're going for something brighter, well that EV is going to climb up, that exposure value is gonna raise, and if you move to something darker and you want that darkest part of that measurement, you can kind of wiggle the meter around and look for when that EV dips down lower, and then you just lock it in by tapping the power button again. So it's an intuitive thing to use. Its limitations were quickly overcome by its conveniences, and that's what I was really surprised about. So I went ahead and I challenged myself a little bit further from black and white shooting, and I took out some expired Velvia 100 that you've seen me use here on the channel before doing some fall colors. I decided to head out uh, during the late afternoon. I had a little bit of sunlight, and I wanted to see how well my expired Velvia 100 would do when metered using PMM, so precision metering method, with some pretty contrasty light. I went out to Park of Roses here in Columbus, and I found some really neat little, uh, little water flows uh, with some ice that was melting and the late afternoon sun kind of reflecting off of it gave us some cool specular highlights that would be a real challenge for slide film. If my metering was a little bit too hot or a little bit too cold, I would easily, easily uh, lose that range of the slide film and the picture would go from pretty cool to meh very quickly. This Velvia 100, even though it's a few years expired, came out really, really well. So I was working in some open shadows, which are a little cooler. This is a daylight balance film, but that warm sunlight kind of streaking in into each composition had a really, really neat effect on the overall shot. And I'm happy to report there are no blown highlights. There are no really, really blocked up shadows. This is a transparency that I'm really happy Happy to show folks, and I'm, while I'm rolling through these, I had an extra few pieces of this Velvia 100, and I also wanted to see, well, what about folks that maybe want to do portraits? It's not all rocks, water, and frickin' trees. Sometimes we just want to shoot portraits. And this spot meter is great for those as well. All you have to do is pick, uh, pick a skin tone or pick a value on the subject's clothing and meter it out. So in the case of, you know, what I'm wearing, you can pick something that's nearly white, or you can pick something that's like, a darker gray or black that you want to have detail and just place it. It's a super easy way to work. So I took Lauren out in the backyard. It was super cold this day. I think it was only like five degrees Fahrenheit out. I said, don't worry, bundle up as much as you want. Get a bunch of different mixed colors on, different colored hat and scarf and everything. And uh, she was pretty quick to oblige because it was super cold. And once again, transparency came out spot on. The spot meter uh, for each of these shots, I placed the I placed the value reflecting off of her skin and I said, okay, that's not middle gray. That's actually 
a stop, stop and a half brighter at, uh, at lighter gray. And it did great. I actually threw two different lenses on the camera. I put one of my sharper lenses, my Schneider 355 F9. And I also added an extra challenge. I pulled out my soft focus lens, which is a, I think it's a little bit shorter. It's like a 300 millimeter equivalent and uh, F5, but it also has like a slower kind of sticky shutter. So I tried to compensate for that. This, this transparency is a smidge lighter than I'd like it to be, but I'm gonna chalk that up to the kind of slower shutter on that 100 year old lens. The meter was fine. It was pretty much the same meter reading, but that's not all. Slide film test did great. So black and white negative film, excellent. E6 transparency film, also excellent. So this little meter is shaping up great. There's one other process that I've been shipping away at here on the channel, and that's the RA4 color reversal process. This is the act of loading color negative printing paper, so C41 film, printing it in color in the dark. You can actually take that paper and load it up into the back of your camera, and through some filtration and some extra steps, you can make a direct positive with it. The dynamic range of this process is one to two f-stops. Not five, not 10, two. This means if your meter is even ever so slightly off, goodbye. It punishes imprecise metering. By the way, that RE4 process has an effective ISO of one. This little spot meter goes down all the way to ISO one. So if you're working with dry plates, direct positive paper, RA4 reversal, this little meter's got your back. It goes all the way down to ISO one. Even if you're working with older duplicating films or really heavy filtration like you would for infrared films, you can still use and rely on a meter like this. That's what's so cool about it. It also goes all the way up to ISO 12,800, which is about, uh, about four f-stops more than I think I would ever need, but hey, it works really well. And that's what's kind of cool. This isn't just for a large format photographer. I'm a large format guy, but this meter also applies to anybody that is working with film. It's lightweight, does exactly what it, uh, it purports to do. And the only one little thing that I thought was kind of like, eh, with it is, you know, it, it feels like too light. It's a, it's a 3D printed nylon. I've already dropped it in the snow and got it probably more wet than the instruction manual said I should, and it's still fine. The thing I had initial issues with was like the battery door. Like the, the wings on it kind of felt like light and like it would kind of create a significant gap uh, on the meter, but this that's like nitpicking. This is a meter that's starting today on Kickstarter, is launching for 185 USD or 225 Canadian. That is a huge savings versus purchasing a brand new uh, Sekonic spot mirror, this one isn't made brand new, hasn't been for 15 years, and even still, these meters go between two and 300 bucks. So we're talking a meter that's brand new, it's lightweight, it's gonna fit in every camera bag very easily, and is gonna retail less. That's a huge deal. That's who I think this is for. If you're just getting into film photography, large format, if you're somebody that supports small, independent manufacturers, check out the Raveni Lab spot meter. I'm gonna throw a link in the description below to Raveni's website for uh, the original meter, as well as the Kickstarter link uh, for the spot meter that goes up today. I'm happy to report, I'm gonna be getting a production version uh, of the spot meter once it becomes available, because it's going to replace, for those long hikes, my L778. Now this thing can stay in the studio. If this thing did flash, it would be the one meter, the only meter I need. As it remains now, 200 bucks, this is a, an easy go for it if you want something that's lightweight and reliable in the field. If you have any questions about large format photography, the metering process, uh, or you know, some other thoughts about the Raveni Lab spot meter, let me know down below in the comments. And if you have any long form questions, as I always say on Large Format Friday, you can always shoot me an email, largeformatquestions at gmail.com. Thanks again for stopping by. And we'll catch you on Friday for LFF.